If we could have a roll call by the town clerk. Chairman Roberts. Present. Council Berry. Present. Council Carson. Here. Council Fritz. Here. Council Lynch. Here. Council McGinty. Here. Council Swift Kayata. Here. Town Manager McGovern. Here. And Town Clerk Lane, present. also in present. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. This evening, we do have a proclamation from the Council uh, on behalf of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, recognizing the uh, September 11 tragedy of a year ago, so I will read that into the record, Cape Elizabeth Town Council resolution, whereas in an unprovoked and senseless act of terrorism, four civilian aircraft were hijacked on September 11, 2001, and crashed in New York City, Pennsylvania, and Pentagon, and whereas innocent U.S. citizens of all heritages, as well as visiting citizens of foreign nations were killed and injured as a result of these horrific acts, and whereas, while we as a union still continue to recover from the unspeakable loss of so many innocent lives, the indomitable spirit of the United States has been revitalized and given way to numerous expressions of heroism and patriotism, and whereas the town of Cape Elizabeth shares in the grief and will commemorate the one-year anniversary of the September 11 tragedies, and now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council in town council assembled does hereby extend our deepest condolences to the innocent victims of these unprovoked actions by terrorists, as well as their families and their friends, and be it further resolved that we, re that we salute the hero heroism of public safety and rescue workers, volunteers, local officials, and those who responded to these tragic events with courage, selfless compassion, determination, and skill, and be it further resolved that we dedicate September 11, 2002 always remembered as 9-11 day, a day to mourn, reflect, and rededicate ourselves to ending terrorism in commemoration of the anniversary of the terrorist attacks, and be it further resolved that we, that we encourage all of our citizens to honor the victims of September 11 by reaffirming their commitment to sustaining our newfound patriotism through volunteerism, community involvement, and service, and be it further resolved that we as citizens dedicate our time, talents, and energy to lift one another up and foster a new level of understanding and awareness. Let us honor the memory of all those who died by being of service to one another and by building the stronger, more perfect union uh, for our founding fathers called for, dated this ninth day of September in the year 2002 at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. And I might also add that President Bush has asked that the flags be flown at half staff on Wednesday, and he's referring to it now as Patriot Day. So, do we need a motion of the council to accept that motion, do we, or is that? Could I have a, an acceptance by the council to a motion to, to accept that? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Show it to be unanimous. Thank you. Reports and correspondence. Anyone have anything they'd like to share with us this evening? Councilor Berry. Uh, we have a short agenda tonight, so I'd just like to mention something that happened four days ago, and uh, the, the uh, Department of Transportation has put a beautiful black road from the South Portland line all the way up Ocean House Road. But the traffic was tied up because nobody had any notice. And I think in the future, we hope that the Department of Transportation will give notice to people who are trying to get to work in the morning and uh, have to get places, rather than being tied up 10 to 15 minutes. And I think that uh, situation stands in sharp contrast to the management of our own manager, police, and other people involved in the Beach to Beacon Run, where the notices were posted on uh, phone poles and trees throughout the town, and everybody had notice ahead of time, and they knew that the road was going to be closed. And I think that uh, the people who are going down Ocean House Road or any road that's being paved should have a detour so that they can get to their destinations in a timely manner, rather than being held up for as much as a mile. And, uh, for a long period of time. But we're very pleased to have the road, and thank you for that to the Department of Transportation. Manager McGovern, would you like to? I, you? I will later on. All right. Anyone else have anything to share? No one. All right. Well, I've got a couple of things to address. It's been a busy month. Um, 
the town manager and myself were able to go down to Fort Williams earlier uh, this past month when the uh, American Veterans uh, with Purple Heart uh, commendations met at the park, had a lobster bake. I believe there were about 400 of them that came to town. They were all extremely impressed with the park and I was very pleased to be able to join them. It's quite uh, awe-inspiring to see so many people that have sustained uh, some minor injuries, I suspect, but others were, you could obviously were very severe. And uh, so I was, that's one of the nice things, being chair, you get to go to those type of things. Yesterday, community services held a, an open house for the new building. Um, I know staff over there particularly worked uh, over the weekend trying to put on some of the final touches, getting pictures up on the walls and everything else, and flower arrangements, and the, there were probably about 250 to 300 people that came through the building. Everyone was impressed, and uh, I think the community is really going to enjoy that. Also this past month, uh, the community garden had a, an open house to celebrate their first year in existence, and Councillor Fritz uh, awarded uh, the council, and I didn't bring it with me, Carol, I apologize, uh, a uh, little notice uh, thanking the council for our support in getting that done. And then the playground committee that uh, so many of us uh, either worked on or sent money to and been looking forward to seeing the playgrounds done. The two of them are now in service at the schools and I understand the kids are really enjoying them. So I commend the, the, the volunteers that did work on that. They did a, a very, it was a long and a very difficult process. Uh, took a lot more money than they anticipated, but they did an excellent job and the, the results are now showing. Uh, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Be so formal. I, I uh, also wanted to uh, agree with you on all those different activities. It was nice to see the community center and the playgrounds uh, come to a culmination. Also, the, to finally see, although I didn't see them, uh, the Family Fun Day fireworks on uh, uh, this past week. And I've, I, I was away at a family wedding, but I've heard nothing but tremendous reports on, on the show and uh, just uh, no fun uh, what a... Did I say something wrong? No. Oh, you said reports from the fireworks. Oh, reports from the fireworks. Yeah, okay. I get it. <laughs> anyway, I heard it was a great show, and I really want to express appreciation to Carol Murray for, uh, for putting it on along with her team, as well as, uh, again, thank Frank Butterworth for his leadership of Family Fun Day and his, his uh, seeing that, that that moved forward to occur. Uh, secondly, I did want to uh, publicly apologize to the citizens for the swimming pool remaining closed. Uh, I think the council's all seen an email that it looks like it's going to be closed for an additional week. Uh, a new cleaning agent was used in the pool uh, that apparently uh, caused uh, a strange interaction with the other chemicals. I'm not, I'm not a chemist, I have difficulty explaining these things. But it, it resulted in levels of chlorine that are supposed to be between 0.2 and 0.4 up to over 2.0, uh, well above the acceptable limits for swimming. And, uh, I really want to thank the Portland Water District uh, for their help through this. We called them out of the blue one day saying, can you help us, uh, thinking of, you know, where, where, where there was a good uh, chemistry, where there was good chemistry expertise, and they came through uh, tremendously. And also, in addition to thanking all the citizens for their patient, want, patients want to thank Lisa Petroselli, the, the pool director and fitness center manager, who, who really, uh, you know, has taken a lot of heat over this. And, you know, nothing that was her fault at all, it was just something that happened. And, really appreciate uh, all of her efforts. Uh, did want to mention September 17th, we're having our employee recognition uh, luncheon. That's a week from this Tuesday. All of our municipal facilities will be closing at noon that day, i.e. meaning the library and the town hall. September 17th, the refuse disposal will be closed anyway. It, it, it is a Tuesday. Uh, I did want to uh, follow up a little bit on what Councillor Berry said about Route 77. Of, really appreciative of the main Department of Transportation for paving that road. Uh, yeah. It put the first inch and a half, a little less, actually, less than an inch of paving on the road. They'll be coming back, we believe, in May for the remainder. Uh, that will be part of a new, new bid. I, I would agree that we could have perhaps done a better job getting out the word. I really, I don't blame the main Department of Transportation for that. Uh, we did have a notice on the web page uh, about a week in advance, and they had notified us a week in advance. We also had notified the daily media as opposed to the weekly, whose, whose deadlines we weren't all meeting. Uh, but again, it was a holiday week. 
It was right after holiday week. It was right when school was beginning, and I realized there was so much going on. You know, it was difficult to follow. But you know, it, it's more our responsibility, I think, to have gotten the word out of that than the main Department of Transportation. So I would, I, I regret that you know so many were taken by surprise. The good news is, is we've heard lots of great comments from citizens yeah. that far out that seem to far outweigh that temporary inconvenience for those two or three days. Finally, I would like to uh, welcome one of our South Fulton City Councilors who is here a long time, South Fulton City Councilor Linda Boudreaux. Uh, it's it's uh, good to see her with us and uh, I've seen her a lot of times over the years uh, at meetings with the two communities. So good to see her. You're not going to mention your new flag? Oh, and we also have a new town flag uh, <laughs> making its first public appearance. Uh, in an interior environment, as you might have noticed, oh, flying the <laughs> police station. Thank you, John. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that was uh, actually, we purchased those through Allen Flag, a local company here in Cape Elizabeth, and the process was coordinated by Brent Sinclair, who's a captain over at the police department. And, uh, whenever you do have a new flag made, you need to buy a few of them, so uh, there will be one of them as well at the Public Works Garage, at the Community Center, at the police and fire stations. Uh, as well as uh, inside and outside. So we're, great, finally great job, to, Henry. we're finally pleased to have uh, a town flag to fly over our fine community. I expect Councillor McGinty to use that to keep the rest of the council in line when we're parading. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jack. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One other item I have. Oh, here. There's a, I know we have a young lady in the, off, uh, in the audience. And uh, what, what's the status of our student representatives in the high school? Does anybody know? Yes, we were given two names about two months ago, and we found and sent them packets, and we discovered today about four o'clock that the two names we were given were not the two student council. <laughs> they were student council reps or reps to the school board or something. They'd given us the wrong names, so we got two new names. Uh, was it two o'clock this afternoon, three o'clock maybe? Yeah, this afternoon. So we should expect to see them perhaps next month? I can't guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> well, do the best you can, then. We'll invite them. <laughs> Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I just would like to mention, as a sort of an add-on to the manager's report, I'd like it to bring uh, to the citizens' attention the annual report for the town of Cape Elizabeth, which is this yellow publication. It's for the year 2001, and it's full of all sorts of interesting facts and numbers and whatever, information about Cape Elizabeth, and I want to commend the manager for his job on it and all his staff people that worked on it, too. It's very informative. Good. Thank you for bringing that up. Before we move on, then, anyone else? Okay. It's gone. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the council on some item that's not on the regularly scheduled? Guess not. Okay. Minutes of the meeting held August 12, 2002. Do I have a, for a motion to accept the minutes? I move acceptance of the minutes from the uh, August 12, 2002 as presented. Second. And a second. Um, discussion. Any discussion? Um, I would like to make a correction. Mm -hmm. um, on um, the pages aren't numbered, but there's a, a section attached that says order of the municipal officers, and it has to do with the vacating um, in the shore, they are, they road or whatever it's called, in Shore Acres, and there's a page, I'll just show it to the clerk. This page has everyone listed as chairman. It has all the councilors listed as chairman. It's got John Roberts, chairman, Henry Berry, chairman, Penny Carson, chairman, and Swift chairman. Everybody's a chairman. Well, it's, check all, check <laughs> it's revisionist history. I mean, it could be nice, but I just thought I should mention that because eventually we'll want to. I may want to find something nice to So I just thought I'd make that little correction. Just sharing the power. It's a sharing the power, yeah. yes, the, the, <laughs> the part of the Right. Miriam, why don't you, you, you have and it. And I, I would also like to note a correction that at the last meeting I left after the vote on item 40-0203. So I was not um, at the meeting for the vote on the date of the next meeting, nor was I at the meeting for the vote to adjourn. So both of those items should indicate 6-0 votes. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Other notes? All in favor of uh, accepting the minutes as amended? 
show it to be unanimous. I'll agree to the uh, uh, motion as amended with my second. <laughs> Item number 23-02-03, uh, tabled 8-12-2002, proposed vacation of a portion of Bayview Road. We have received correspondence from Mr. Keneally that they have not been able to get together yet. Uh, Jack is asking that we uh, postpone this item to the next council meeting. Uh, I would entertain a motion, I guess, to uh, postpone this to the next meeting. If, uh, do we need to take it off first? All right. Can we have a motion, I guess, to take it off the table first? I move second. Okay. All right. I've already made the discussion, so... Uh, could, I, could I add that um, Mr. Keneally has asked for it, but I believe also the, all parties involved are in agreement that... They want to postpone it further. Month. A further month, yes. Mm -hmm. It's Should not we just a Mr. Pardon? There was a, also an email this afternoon from Paul Thalen, who's the attorney for Mr. Panansky, who was the person who originally requested the vacation. I did not see that one. So I'd like to move that we table it for another month. Second. All right. Uh, did we vote to take it off the table again? Yes. We, oh, um, we, did we? Didn't we vote? No. We, uh, I'm doing a good job. Made the motion, but didn't vote. <laughs> all, in, all in favor of taking it off the table. Taking it off the table. Got a little over here. I yeah. Apologize. Moving fast. Everybody wants to get home early. <laughs> now we need a. Now I. Now we can have now the motion. Like to now I second. That we table it until next month. And the second stands. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor of tabling till next meeting. So that could be unanimous as well. Item number 42-02-03, um, and request from Councilor Henry N. Berry III to reconsider item number 25-02-03. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was one of the prevailing voters here, so uh, it was brought to my attention that there might be some question of our compliance with the ordinances uh, here. and. Uh, I think Councillor Fritz uh, can explain it uh, more fully than I, and I'd like to cede my time to her to uh, allow her to do so. I think we'd probably need to have a motion first just to remove it from the table. It's not on the table. No, no. Or to, to take it back up. Vote to reconsider. The vote to reconsider? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, I move to uh, reconsider the uh, item. Second. Okay. Well, um, I just have to, we, can, we can do I some discussion. I don't know sure. if it's a point of order or a point of information. It's a question. Does it have to be moved and seconded by somebody who was on the prevailing side? Prevailing side? No, I did check on that earlier today. I just didn't know. And is there is there an explanation that can precede a vote on reconsidering? Yes. Yep, yes. We're in discussion now, right? Yeah. Um, she's shaking her head no no i was shaking my head i don't know <laughs> <laughs> all right you know he knew something we didn't know and we typically don't just vote on something without allowing dis yeah. discussion right, right. So, councillor fritz um well I, I i explained a fair amount of it last um meeting but i think this is a an issue that i don't think we take up very often so i think that we are not necessarily as familiar with this part of the ordinance as uh, we might be. But what we did last week, or last month, was um, in one item to allow an extension of the sewer area to someone across from uh, Ramble Road. And in the following vote, we ended up saying we want to review the sewer extension policy. And that we, we agreed to do. Um, but I think in, in the previous item, we needed to go according to current ordinances, not in something that, that might be changed in the future. Um, so. I believe that it was incorrectly um, decided on, on the current ordinances. And I think we made the decision because it might be prudent to allow that extension to be 
made to the sewer because Route 77 was about to be paved, but I, that is not what the ordinances say the requirements are. Um, the ordinances say that the council may um, may allow an extension if there is sufficient capacity. And I think that we know that there was sufficient capacity, but that it may extend beyond the sewer service area as designated in the sewer plan if it goes to a growth area that is identified in the town's comprehensive plan. So specifically, you need to refer to the comprehensive plan, and the comprehensive plan is very specific about where the growth areas are in the town. And that can be found on page 20 of the comprehensive plan, which includes areas in the north part of the town. I mean, I can pass around this map that is in the comprehensive plan, and it's very specifically shade, shaded areas here and here and the north part of town and this area and an area here. It does not include the property that we um, approve. Um, the other reason that we could say that an extension could be allowed is where there is an existing private subsurface system that is malfunctioning and a replacement system variance would be required for a replacement system from the Department of Human Services from the state. So I don't think that it is adequate to say for, for the person to simply come and say, I have a malfunctioning system on a seven and a half acre parcel. The proper way to go about it is to have a licensed soil highway, <coughs> very similar to what um, Dr. Johnson had on his property in the next item on our agenda tonight, and actually certify that the system is malfunctioning and that it, and then they'd have to apply to the human, or that, that no other area could be found to have a replacement system, and that it would require a variance from the state plumbing code, none of which was presented to us. So I think that we were premature in making that decision if we follow our current ordinances. Dr. LeBerry. Well, my only concern is that uh, we might have done an uh, unlawful act or something that was outside the ordinance, so I think we would just should be sure we comply with the ordinances and the statutes as we're sworn to do. That was the only reason I put it on the agenda. Any discussion from any other, from further, further from other councillors? I guess I would just say that I won't be supporting the motion to reconsider this. Um, I don't think there's any new um, information available tonight that we didn't consider at our last vote. So, uh, and, and I think we discussed it at some length. If I might just add, um, I did not have the map that shows the designated growth areas that are in the comprehensive plan. And our ordinances do refer to that. But if I might just ask the manager if he feels that I'm correct in my interpretation of the ordinances. Mr. McGovern. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't think the ordinance provides it. I'm the person that interprets the ordinance. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do think that, uh, let me answer it in two ways. I, my understanding of the growth area provision, the map you're, that you're passing around, that's an either or thing. So I, I think it's important that you know, it can, it's either the growth area criteria or it's these other criteria. You agree? 
through you, Mr. Chairman. That but I, but I would say that it one. doesn't meet either one. Yeah, but but that is, and, and I would agree that it's not a growth area. But then the second is to look at that those second standards, the second point. That's your your second option, and those are is the capacity, and the council seemed to have a finding that there was capacity. Second is if uh, there's a malfunctioning system, and we did verify with Bruce Smith, that, uh, our code enforcement officer, that there is a malfunctioning system. It would appear that there is a third test that the applicant could have to prove that uh, there is, in fact, not only a malfunctioning system, but a waiver could be required from the state. We've, we've had a lot of difficulty, though, with that section of the ordinance in that, and, I, and you know, we've had some quite a bit of discussion on this, in that the anyone, it, there's no requirement that everyone submit every test that they, that they do. And someone can easily submit a test on a lot that shows a failure simply in an attempt to get a failure, mm. if that's their design. So as a result, when in the past the council has debated these issues, including most recently for the good table, the precedent has been that the council has not demanded that that provision of that, that final line simply for the reason that anyone could submit a test simply by do, doing it in an area of their lot that obviously wouldn't pass. And you know, most, most every lot in Cape Elizabeth you can find an area that won't pass, particularly if it's a lot of any area. So I you know I agree with you, Councillor Fritz, that provision is there. And I would agree with you that it could be interpreted in the fashion that you're interpreting it. But I also believe that that, it, that precedence in using this ordinance in the past has been that, that that portion has not come to the forefront simply because of the fact that anyone could, there's no requirement that every test be submitted and that they could easily submit a test that, that shows failure. So it's a, you know, a requirement without the, with, without the teeth of enforcement because uh, they can get around it so easily. Thank you very much. Uh, were we ready to, John, yeah. uh, something again to I, I thought the way I looked at this, once we changed the sewer service area map, we included them in the area so they were no longer outside the area and had to meet these requirements. Uh, and that's the way I looked at it, that we, we changed the map. In other words, they don't have to be because they would be excluded from the area, they would have to meet these requirements to be included, but we included them by expanding the map, make, making them part of the area. So that's the way I looked at it, and uh, uh, I won't uh, support reconsideration on this. Yeah, I, I think Councilor McGinty, you know, well, I'm not gonna agree or disagree with his point. I, I do think it makes an, that he makes an important point, as, as with any item for the council, is that it, it really is the responsibility of each individual council member to make the interpretations as they feel is appropriate. And as, you know, however one votes on this issue or any other issue, it's, it's based on the information that you think you have and the, that you, you do have and on, on the way that you yourself decide to interpret it, and as, you know, Councilor McGinty has in this instance. Can I call the question or? But again, if I could just, um, the ordinances tell us how we, they're the laws of the town. And it says that we can extend the public sewer beyond the sewer service area shown in the public sewer plan by amending that plan as follows. And that is into growth areas that are consistent with the town's comprehensive plan plan is specific about where growth areas are. Our ordinances have to be consistent with the plan. The other way is where there's an existing subservice system that is malfunctioning and then they have to have, also have to have a variance for a replacement system. So. We, we are not supposed to extend the sewer area unless these two things, one of the two are met, and I don't think either one of them are. I'm not seeing any further discussion. 
So the question, because we have the question that was so moved and seconded to reconsider, mm -hmm. reconsider uh, this item number 25. All in favor of re reconsidering uh, the item on the table? All opposed? Six to one remains. Put my glasses back on here. Item number 430203, request from Dr. Craig E. Johnson for an extension of the sewer line on Shore Road. Provide sewer service for 1226 Shore Road. Uh, and Dr. Johnson is in the audience. Um, and we have a, a motion to accept this item to start discussion. Or would Dr. Johnson like to speak first? Please identify your, your, yourself. Uh, Frank Johnson, uh, Cape Elizabeth Family Medicine. We purchased the, uh, what was the Cape Community Center. <clears throat> and I think if my letter is included in the packet of information, it's somewhat self-explanatory. We, we had had an expectation that had been set that uh, sewer was either connected or available to the building upon the purchase of it. And, uh, that turned out not to be so. And the sewer line actually ends quite a ways down Shore Road. Uh, so that was uh, a bit of a surprise. Uh, we went ahead with some of our design plans that we wanted to proceed with for the building. Um, but Bruce Smith, the code enforcement officer, was very concerned about the existing septic system. Uh, we had felt that we would then try and use what was currently available to the building. Uh, but um, because of various unknowns that he felt uh, were present with the building, such as, you know, there's no recorded uh, septic system on file. There's uh, uh, certainly the town did not push the amount of water, so there's no way of looking back through the uh, water district records to determine what the capacity is. Uh, he had some reservations about letting us proceed with the additions and uh, ultimately basically suggested strongly that we should be connecting to the sewer. Uh, so we were sort of left with that in our lap and uh, I turned now back to town. Uh, I guess I wasn't, uh, I wasn't aware of the sewer map, so I'm not sure where the property sits in regards to the sewer map that you, re or that you referred to. Uh, yeah, I was sort of my sense that being part of the town center, it probably would have been included in uh, a sewer system plan for the town. May we ask Thank questions? You. Certainly. Uh, Dr. Johnson, is your septic system malfunctioning? I'm not clear, I guess, on the status. No, it, it isn't malfunctioning, and it hasn't malfunctioned for the town. <coughs> um, as a single-family dwelling, it's rated at approximately 270 gallons, and that's within certainly the limits that the state sets for what a practice can use, such as ours. Um, but you know, given the expansion plans that we have for the building, the code enforcement officer just feels that somehow more is going to be ultimately required for the building. Has the um, code enforcement officer been specific about what more would be required or are you just coming here now asking for a sewer extension without having um, a clear understanding of what the town would require? Uh, and I, I, I would not fault you for that. I'm just... Yeah, I, I could uh, forward on a letter from Bruce Smith in that regard where he lists several options, but when it basically comes down to um, the full build-up that we'd like to do, he's fairly clear and fairly strong in his point that he feels uh, should be connected to the sewer line. Thank you. Uh, Just by, by way of explanation, that in relation to the previous item, the town center zone is not subject to all those specific requirements. If I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. 
in other words, it's appropriate for the council. It can be this. considered without reviewing all those other criteria and mm -hmm. revisiting that debate. Councillor Gosson. Yeah, I, I guess I just need to get this straight. Dr. Johnson has purchased a building which has a now functioning and adequate septic system. Yeah. And as an add-on to the presentation of his plans, and since I'm looking at the planning board document here, the planning board is the one who's, who was asked that this be building be hitched up to the sewer system. And according to the, uh, the planning board minutes here, the engineers were consulted and they said, despite the fact that it's going from a single family home to a medical building, the existing septic system would pose no problems to the uh, addition of this building. And that the existing septic system is adequate. So I'm, I'm not sure why we find ourselves in this position other than the planning board has requested that he do it. I personally, at this time, would not require the new owner, to feel that I could require the new owner to, to go to head up a 300 feet of sewer system to a system that's working fine and, and, and is going to meet his new needs. And that somewhere down the future, we may have to deal with that, but right now, you don't have to deal with that. So I'm, I'm inclined to not uh, require that this applicant put his new business on the sewer system. Councilor Berry. Well, I, th I think that, well, first, I guess there ought to be a motion on the floor. Uh, so I'll, I'll move that uh, the extension of the sewer line on Shore Road to uh, provide sewer service for 1226 Shore Road. Can, can we have, um, can I have a clarification on that motion? Is Would that include the town paying for the sewer extension or, yeah. the, or the property owner? The, the town. The, request uh, the, the plan okay so that's your motion then is for the town yeah. to pay and for the, and the Thank uh, you. building inspector has uh, strongly suggested it or recommended it all right do we have a second on that well, for purposes of discussion i'll second it council mcginty could i get a clarification um yeah. the, the, do you want do you care one way or the other i mean this isn't your request you're here because they asked you, or they suggested you be here, or re recommended, however you want to put it, ordered you to be here, I guess, I don't know. Um, you're, you're satisfied with the current system as long as it's working and meets your needs, is that correct? Well, truthfully, we haven't fully tested the existing system. <clears throat> the town barely used the, uh, the system that's in place. So as I said, we've talked to the water district, and according to the records, I mean, the town paid the, quote, minimal charge every month for water purposes for the building. So they really have no way of going back and saying, this is what the system was capable of doing. Um, so, Excuse yeah. me, was the previous owner, were there records for the, the previous owner before the town when it was used as a resident? No, I, I asked the water district to go back as far as they could, and that was as far as they were willing to go back. Now, it, perhaps they have to dig back into some deeper files to find out what the, uh, what the Joneses actually used uh, for water supply. That would have been over 12, 13 years ago. Thank you. I'm sorry. McGovern, I think you could probably answer part of that. I mean, Manager McGovern. Mike. Uh, just a, Mike, all right. That's yeah, too hot. To uh, formality. When, when the town purchased the property, we did due diligence and uh, the septic system with residential use was operating perfectly fine. That was about 12 years ago. Do you know how large your family was in there previously? Yes. I, I you know, the... Two, I think they had three kids. I don't. Anyone know? It's built for a three-bedroom house. That's what yeah. it was, right? Three-bedroom house. I think there's three kids that I don't really recall. But it, it, there was no. You know, we looked into it. There were no issues. There were no problems. It was functioning fine. It was a regular family type use. Mm -hmm. So, so it was functioning then. It's functioning now. It was used as a residence, which presumably had four or five people living there. And then I, I understand that the town used it, and there was just minimal water going through the system because it was a town building. It wasn't used that much. So I, I am unclear. This is my big question about why, and maybe Mike could shed some light on this. It's a, the, the letter from um, Dr. Johnson says that the, uh, we had hoped that the existing septic system would be allowed for our uses. The town code enforcement officer, however, has indicated that he will not allow this since we have no documentation of what the current capacity is for the system. Do, can you shed any light on this, yeah. Mike? Because I'm not understanding. We've got a system that works. We've got, I don't know. 
I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, Counselor, I can't shed a whole lot of light, but I think uh, Dr. Johnson answered that question when he indicated that, and he could correct me if, I'm, if I misinterpreted him, with his phase one of what he plans to do, the renovation and minor alterations, uh, it's, it's perfectly fine. Bruce is holding that once he adds an expanded area, which includes, as I've seen the plans, three or four more, uh, uh, what do you call them? Examining rooms. Yeah. Examining rooms. Right. And you know, th those types of added facilities, then it becomes an issue of whether or not this septic system is, is adequate once you add that additional potential load onto it. So how many examining rooms are there in phase one? Phase one would give us, um, I believe, five examples. A total of five. Right. And then in phase two, you would add how many more? That adds four more examples. So it would be almost double. Right. Um, in terms of examining rooms. But as as far as staffing, you you indicated one physician and three office right. people. So those would be all the employees you would have, even with the extension. Or with phase one, yes. And then how many more might it be? With the uh, phase two ex expansion, we would uh, we would be adding another provider, possibly uh, possibly two more providers, plus the appropriate staff to support those providers. But still, even I mean, those people are are not going to be taking showers, doing laundry, right. doing all the things that you would do in a single family house. Um, it seems unnecessary to me. Councilor yeah. Lynch. I, I'm just, I guess, perplexed why why we're here, and it sounds like it's more the town's issue than Dr. Johnson's. Um, the use sounds minimal. It appears from the planning board notes that there was a finding that it was adequate. Um, I'm, I am reluctant to spend the town's money to extend the sewer line 300 feet, and yet I don't want to see a citizen and a taxpayer whipsawed between the town code enforcement officer and the town council. Um, so I guess I'm looking maybe for some guidance from the town manager on what we can do about this, because it seems to be an unfortunate situation. Yeah. It, it I don't think there's any need to be whipsawed. Uh, you know, it, I think Dr. Johnson is here because the, the planning board's asked him to be here. And if I was Dr. Johnson, I'd be concerned longer term where I'm going with this. Uh, one of the difficulties with this proposed sewer extension is that because it wouldn't be serving other properties and because we wouldn't have a terminating manhole, it would have to be a force main and then it would have to be pumped up to it. Uh, as a result, it doesn't really have the potential for serving any more properties. You know, I would much prefer that we look at this, that, we, you know, Dr. Johnson gets by for a couple of years before he, uh, he does his further phases, and then we look longer term at putting in a real sewer that might pick up, you know, the, the potential for additional properties as well that would, be, you know, be in the ground there. It would have a terminating manhole that uh, uh, could enable it to function better in the long run. Does this Barry. mean that Bruce Smith, uh, the building inspector, is going to uh, deny his going forward and then we are not going to help him? Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got to be able to, uh, I think we should deal fairly with uh, uh, Dr. Johnson. The prospectus indicated that there was sewer available and now we're saying there is no sewer uh, right there and he, at the suggestion of or perhaps requirement of the planning board and the building inspector, have come to us to ask us to do the right thing. And uh, I don't see that uh, if he's, as you say, whipsawed between the building inspector who says you can't do it and then the council that says we won't allow you to uh, uh, have the connection. I don't think that's fair. And I think we ought to uh, uh, deal fairly with anybody who's buying stuff, uh, uh, real estate from the town. If I might, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. The building inspector is not saying, and Dr. Johnson, correct me if I'm wrong, that phase one can't proceed to the matter that's really currently before the planning board uh, for approval. It would only be phase two. And by you know, not approving this tonight, if that was the desire of the council, that in no way you know, 
forestalled the possibility for future discussions as to, you know, how to do this. And it also, you know, I'd say this publicly for the record, and is that it leaves open the issue of what the assurance of how the town interprets that assurance as to the availability of the sewer. And, you know, that Councillor Berry, for one, believes that, that we should put the sewer there because that, that was indicated, and there are others who may feel differently. But, you know, I think that, that can be on the record that there is at least some feeling in the Council that there is some sort of a, a moral obligation to extend the sewer because it was indicated in the, the papers offering the property that uh, sewer was available to the property. Well, if, if can I ask Dr. Johnson, could you live with that uh, if, if they allow you to if use the existing sewer now? Uh, or existing septic, septic. septic. I mean existing septic. Right. Yeah, the existing septic. Septic sewer. Yeah. Okay. Not, not sewer. Waste septic. disposal system. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel comfortable that the most likely the existing septic system will handle our immediate needs and even the needs as we go into phase one. Uh, you know, I, when we would like to proceed with the build out of phase two is probably, I mean, sooner rather than later, but I have no date on that. Uh, but I, I think that, you know, the planning board needs to, you know, we've had this discussion and I think that somehow we need to bring Bruce Smith and the planning board and us together so that we can have some understanding on it. Right. And I think that we, you know, at some point, We'll need to readdress the issue of uh, connecting up the sewer. Councillor Barry, I tend to agree with you somewhat that uh, sewer was perceived to be there. Um, although I'm not inclined to want to spend the money right now if the other system could work, because I would prefer to take a look at the the issue that uh, the town manager mentioned of maybe doing the sewer correctly. So rather than just acting tonight and and putting a force pain down as far as that property. Perhaps we ought to be taking a full look at uh, all of the top of Shore Road as to where we're going with it. And then I would vote with you to go to extend that sewer at town cost. We had provided in, our, in the literature that there was there. Um, but I don't think we need to spend that, that kind of money right now until we're sure what is the best system to put down, down that road. Well, and as long as that doesn't hold up Dr. Johnson. Exactly. Um, as long as he can I would prefer to with this project and that the uh, building inspector and planning board don't hold him back. As long as, yeah, I prefer to, and it's unfortunate that, that the code enforcement officer is not here. I thought about that earlier, that we should have requested that, and we did not, so that's, that's our fault. Um, we're, Councilor we're Carson. Policy, we're, we're the policy-making board, and I think we're setting a policy for this situation right here tonight. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the question, the motion has been for, put forward as read by Councillor Barry, and I'd like to move the question. Okay. And the motion is the motion was for to the town the request, as written here by Mr. Dr. Johnson. Motion for, the is for the town to pay for right. an extension of the sewer yeah. line to provide sewer service. No one's asked, but the estimated cost is nine thousand dollars. That was in the material. So, for the record, yes. Can I just, you know, just make a comment? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not going along with at this time, certainly for the town to even in the real near future extend the sewer because I think the other, in, in that section, because I think the other businesses in that section between where the sewer ends now and Dr. Johnson's property do not have many employees and it, it really doesn't seem a necessary um, sewer improvement when you consider some of the areas that have to come out of the, ex the sewer extension or the sewer fund, which is what pays for these things. I mean, I think we have like the Mountain View area that really need some considerable work. I mean, we had the, the issue of the nightmare that the foam cliffs went through, and I think we've delayed some of the things we were going to be doing in the Mountain View area, and that certainly, we don't want another nightmare to come along like that again. So I think that's where the priority has to be, rather than trying to serve areas where we really don't have many employees or problems. Right, there is somebody asked to move the question. All right. All in favor of the motion as uh, 
as read or as uh, submitted earlier. All opposed? It's short to be one to six. Councillor Berry in favor. Dr. Johnson, I th did you get the, the sense that if there's a problem, we'll, we'll work with you on that? Very good. Oh, I understand. And then, you know, but if there's not objection, I'd like to have a, a very informal dialogue with the other property owners in that immediate area, which, you know, we, which we have not done, uh, find out their, their interests. Uh, again, understanding, is, as uh, Carol Fritz pointed out, Councillor Fritz, Mountain View Park is, is a very, very high priority for the town, mm -hmm. dealing with sewage. Yeah. But in no way should your, your project be held up because of something we have done. So. Wait, wait, Jack. Yes. And I guess I, I'm just wondering, we did authorize last month a study of the sewer issues, and I would prefer, I guess, to see that study move forward before we start having dialogue with property owners in specific mm -hmm. areas. Good point, Councillor Swift Kayata. <laughs> Tricky there for a minute. Um, I just have a question, and this is just for my own information, but perhaps for someone else there who's watching. How does it work if the planning board feels something is okay and the code enforcement officer is indicating something differently? I mean, do they have to be in agreement? I think that was to you, Mike. Yeah, that was to the manager. It depends on the circumstance. <laughs> you want to add anything to that? No. You know, there there are certain areas of the law that it's the that the code enforcement officer has the final say. Okay. In certain areas, the planning board has the final say. Okay. And in this particular instance, I'm not sure. Who has the final say? <laughs> Although, you know, Bruce clearly would rely on Albert Frick's submitted material. And Albert Frick's submitted material says, for the current purpose, it's just fine, and that's what yeah, Bruce, yeah. Would, Bruce Smith, the code enforcement officer, would base his opinion on. Is that helpful? Yep. That does. And he is a very well respected soils evaluator. Mm -hmm. All right. Dr. Johnson, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 440203, consideration of a proposed change in the collection methods for past due sewer bills. And I would ask the town clerk if she would uh, discuss and address this issue for us. Thank you very much. In your packet, um, I did outline the offer by the Port and Water District. The Water District is now offering to its um, member communities a shutoff policy for delinquent sewer. And this policy basically mirrors the collection process that the Water District does for um, has to water. This policy will replace the sewer lien process that we uh, have now in effect for past due sewer. The shutoff policy was developed, I think, probably about a year ago using the city of Portland and Peaks Island as test communities for the program. Uh, so the Portland Water District is now ready to unveil that and offer it to other communities. Uh, the two main benefits I see with this is that the town and the water district uh, on a more timely basis receive payments. And secondly, I believe that the shutoff consequence will more directly impact those folks um, that are actually responsible for the bills. And in your packet, I gave you a couple of examples that we have rental properties, business lease properties, and transfer properties, whereby some of those individuals that are actually responsible for the utility bill, since their name does not appear on the deed to the property, the sewer lien goes in their name, so there really is no um, incentive for them to pay. And I have over the years working uh, with owners of properties and, and so forth found that there has been some unfortunate circumstances that folks' uh, properties have been leaned or threatened to be leaned, if you will, uh, and the utility bill really was not there. So since they own the property, uh, they suffered the consequences. So, uh, and again, I've explained it to you uh, in my memo. I've also uh, outlined the collection procedure. Um, the Water District terms them as eligible accounts. These accounts would be 50 days past due and combined water and sewer uh, of more than $200. Uh, if they are considered an eligible account, they would be sent a 14-day shutoff notice, which would give them an additional 14 days to pay. If someone uh, is unable to pay, uh, they can go to the water district for a payment plan. So there is an ability for someone, uh, whether it's short-term or long-term, 
long-term financial hardships, the Portland Water District will make every effort to work with them uh, for a, a payment program. Um, in terms of uh, reconnection fee, if someone was turned off, uh, I gave you analysis between what a sewer lien fees would be and a reconnection fee if it did get to that point. And in fact, the reconnection fee is, is slightly less. Uh, so we're not adding more of a financial burden uh, on someone if they actually got to that point. If the council is so inclined uh, to move ahead uh, and adopt um, this policy, it would be appropriate, um, I would think, in the motion to approve the policy as set by the water district so that each time um, the policy change, we wouldn't have to come back to the council. And I can cite um, a change that might be forthcoming. The water district may go uh, to the PUC, I believe it is, to have the $200 um, minimum actually less than to $100. Uh, they feel that $200 really extends it out and, and gives, it's a little bit long for that utility to go unpaid. And also I would um, ask to be included in the motion that the town does reserve the right uh, or the ability to utilize the lien process when necessary. I was talking to the water district, we talked about there's a lot, of, still some old mains in town, <coughs> and there may be more than one property that is served um, by the same main, and obviously you would not want to shut off a water main uh, to two or more properties if it's just one individual um, that is delinquent on their policy. So we feel that this is uh, really the way to go with the town. To give you an idea, it, when we looked at the sewer rates, the Portland Water District and I, and what the rates are for the town, we feel that someone that is probably about four months past due would then be considered an eligible account. So again, it's not something that um, someone, if they're past due for a month or two, we're really looking at probably four months down the line. And um, again, this is a benefit to the town and the district to get that money, hopefully in a little bit quicker manner, but with the ability uh, to go with a payment plan if necessary, so. Thank you, Deb. I don't suppose you were presumptuous <coughs> enough to write your own motion, were you? I basically just don't. <laughs> <laughs> basically, it would be, well, I, I'd like to move. Oh, go ahead. I, I, I'd like to move to approving the policy as set by the water district to uh, change the collection method for past due sewer bills, and I'd like to also reserve the right to use the lien process. Second. Very good. Somebody it's accumulate actually, that if it was sewer and water that's together. That's right. It's actually 200 back. right now what the, the right. minimum in yeah. the 50 days I believe it is but yes you're right it would be combined water and sewer and again it's really mirroring or piggybacking on the current shutoff policy that the district has for water we're just really com we're are combining sewer with that so you're absolutely right it would be a combination of the both one month if there's a delinquency it might be more sewer than water or vice versa or what have you but you're absolutely right mm -hmm. but I mean if, if you're on sewer you would come do to have your water shut off sooner because that the bill is way higher. I mean, yeah, and it I mean, just on pointing on that out. Correct. Mm -hmm. Can you have a higher sewer bill than your water bill? Oh yeah. Typically, yes. It costs more to clean it, Henry. The, the what? It costs more to clean it than to provide it. I mean, what goes in goes out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any further discussion from councilors? I would just add that my daughter and son-in-law purchased a house in South Portland a couple of years ago, and they wound up with a lien on their property from prior owner, and it happened to cross as they were doing the title search. So they didn't, it never got cleared, and it took the act of, act of Congress for them to get that thing off in their property. So I'm certainly going to support this, because it's not fair to a <laughs> homeowners to buy something and find a bill that was never paid for by the, by the appropriate party. They want to pay, and I think it was a $90 bill. Um, not a huge amount of money, but it's not another $90 that they should have had to pay. And uh, you could, that was the only way they could get it off the books. So, seeing no further discussion, uh, all in favor of the motion as read. Show it to be unanimous. And we now. Theme tonight for this uh, meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we want to go there. You want to know what the theme is? <laughs> My blue eyes are turning brown. I <laughs> like I said, I don't think we want to go there. The, uh, we come to our second portion where citizens can discuss items that were not on the agenda. So it's your last and final chance. If anybody would like to get up and say anything. And I don't see anybody 
rushing to get to the podium, so I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Nice so move. Second. All in favor. We need and to make sure that to be unanimous also. Would you, would you announce, I was going to say. Announce the, the meeting? Announce the upcoming meeting. Certainly, we can do. We have on uh, Thursday of this week, on the 12th, uh, the council is meeting with the Zoning Board of Appeals to discuss practical difficulty standard, how that is working. We had asked earlier to get back with them after they'd had some experience with it. Wednesday, October 9, uh, regular town council meeting. Thursday, October 10, the uh, Gullcrest Master Plan. We'll be discussing that with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Wednesday, November 13, regular council meeting. Thursday, November 14, uh, we'll be the, discussing the town center plan with the planning board. And Monday, December 9, the re regular town council meeting. And on Thursday the 12th, we're holding for a workshop if there are any issues that come up in the meantime. So with that, we... Uh, I, I, would, I would just note for people who may not have been p paying close attention that the regular town council meetings for October and November will not be on Mondays. They will be on Wednesdays. Just Thank you. To bring that to everybody's attention. So, with that, we are done, and you are free to turn it off.